name is Greg Broderick. I had the pleasure today of interviewing Dr. Mo Cara and Dr. Arthur Bud Burnett about an upcoming article to be published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In August of 2015, an expert colloquium was commissioned by the Sexual Medicine Society of North America, also known as SMSNA. This group met in Washington, D.C. to discuss the common clinical scenario of men who present with low testosterone and associated signs and symptoms accompanied by low or normal gonadotropin levels. This syndrome is not classical primary testicular failure or secondary pituitary hypothalamic failure. The panel consisted of 17 experts in men's health, sexual medicine, urology, endocrinology, and methodology. The colloquium designated this syndrome adult onset hypogonadism because it occurs commonly in men of middle age. Hi, I'm Mohit Kara, Associate Professor of Urology at Baylor College of Medicine. The manuscript we'll be discussing today is adult onset hypogonadism, which will be published at the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Over the past decade, testosterone has become one of the fastest selling medications in the United States. However, in March of 2015, the FDA expressed concern that many men being treated with testosterone were being treated off-label. We know that roughly 15% of men who are being treated with testosterone are being treated on-label and meet the criteria of classical primary or secondary hypogonadism. In other words, roughly 85% of men who are being treated with testosterone today are being treated off-label. However, we know today that many of these men are suffering from AOH, or adult onset hypogonadism. There are three takeaway messages from this article. First, AOH is a clinical and biochemical syndrome that is clinically distinct from classical primary and secondary hypogonadism. Second, AOH defines the syndrome which many men, roughly 85% of men, are suffering from, from hypogonadism. And third, AOH is associated with medical conditions such as obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Many clinicians are unaware that they are treating patients with low testosterone off-label. In fact, many clinicians are unaware of adult onset hypogonadism. The hopes are this manuscript provides a deeper understanding of AOH and helps clinicians diagnose and better treat men with AOH. There are three areas of research that need to be further explored. First, does AOH cause metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and obesity, or is this simply an association? The second is, does the treatment of AOH result in improvements in diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and obesity? And finally, do those patients with AOH have a greater risk for cardiovascular disease? My name is Arthur Bud Burnett. I'm a professor of urology at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. I'm also the past president of the Sexual Medicine Society of North America. It is hoped uh, that the findings of this paper will provide a deeper understanding of uh, this condition, adult onset hypogonadism. It will help regulatory agencies and insurers have a better understanding of the full spectrum of hypogonadism. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.